Uh, my name is Craig Kaplan. Um, I'm Area Vice President of the uh, EdgeCast Networks. We're based in Santa Monica. We are uh, six years into our operations there. We have 25 different data centers that we, we manage content delivery from worldwide. North America, Europe, Asia, Australia, South America. And we manage all this content delivery for you. So it's a, it's a very uh, nice value for you. How do you measure time on the internet? I know I was wondering about that this morning in the shower. But uh, one second is equal to $2.5 million if you look at an e-commerce website that generates $100,000 a day in revenue. You have a one second lag time, $2.5 million in potential revenue loss over one year. So what's the problem there? The problem is, is in 1995, the average website had four objects. And in 2011, the average website homepage has 95 objects, a 20x increase of content. We love providing content. But are we doing it fast enough to benefit our businesses? Here's one of my favorite sports websites with the number of objects that are loading in a waterfall graph, courtesy of webpagetest.org, which is a great site for doing just kind of one-off tests for your, for your business website. You can't see it very well, but it says the first view of ESPN.com took eight and a half seconds. And those are all, each one of those lines are objects loading onto the, onto the page. So what's happening when it takes eight and a half seconds to load a web page? Well, as your page load times increases here from two to four to six to eight to 10 seconds, page abandonment increases as a percentage. That's not good. Some other stats, 47% of consumers expect a wedge page to load in two seconds or less. 40% abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. 52% of online shoppers state that quick page loading is important to their site loyalty. 44% of online shoppers will tell their friends about a bad experience online. I'm always telling my friends about bad online experiences. Not usually related to e-commerce, but that's a different story. Um, this is sourced from some data from Kissmetrics, not from us, but from, from industry data. And it's e-commerce data, but really it can apply to any type of online web business out there. So one second delay in page response can result in 7% reduction in your conversions on your shopping cart. So what do we do about it? Well, there's some terrific resources out there on this thing called the internet. Um, Steve Souder has been kind of a web page performance guru from Yahoo. He's not at Yahoo anymore, but basically the best practices you can get from Yahoo Developer Network is right there online. The Google Developers Network has terrific uh, performance enhancement suggestions as well. There's 35 best practices listed on uh, the Yahoo Developer Network site. Only one of them says to use a CDN. Um, but using a CDN really is going to hit a lot of your performance needs in one shot. But it's not that simple because look at all the different types of content loading. You've got video, you've got ad networks, you've got shopping carts, you've got different applications running, all sorts of third-party variables loading on your page. So manage what you can control. Most of your web content on your page and pages is static and easily cacheable by any CDN, hopefully by Edgecast, but by any CDN. And it's really easy to kind of hit this low-hanging fruit in terms of the content that you want to accelerate. Essentially, you can go into um, a, an Edgecast account or any CDN account create a C name, you can go in and, and create a C name that, or an origin location, excuse me, then a C name, and then you test, change your local host file, do some more extensive testing, then you point your DNS to that, that CDN. Done, four steps can affect a ton of content acceleration. So you hit one of those 35 best practices, and it's going to affect maybe 70 or 80 or 90% of the content on your, on your web page. 
And this is what happens. So you've got a two second decrease on this particular test. Obviously it's, it's variable depending on the type of content, what you're comparing against. In this case, it's an origin performance test against uh, the same page loading on, on Edgecast loading in, in 2.8 seconds instead of 4.9 seconds. Other benefits of using a CDN. Painless and automatic scalability. You don't have to manage servers. You don't need to deploy servers. You don't have to manage um, any sorts of infrastructure on our edge. You got to manage your origin servers and your application servers, um, but we even have some functionality around filling over and serving cached pages if your origin is unavailable. So the architecture of a CDN just naturally has a lot of redundancy and reliability. You got failover from one location to the next automatically. When uh, Hurricane Sandy came through New York last week, um, we had uh, two data centers lose power, uh, New York and uh, DC. We went on backup generations, generators, fortunately, which is glad that those were working. Um, but even if they went completely offline, we reconnect with data centers farther down the coast. So the architecture is designed to load balance and scale automatically so you don't have to think about these things in advance. What's unique to Edgecast is that if you open up an Edgecast account, one Edgecast account is the same as any other Edgecast account. So our customers, our biggest customers out there who are delivering content from a large number of our servers, they have the same capabilities as if you're a startup and open up an entry level plan with us on an account. That account has the same access to the total number of servers on our network across all 25 data centers. So you truly get this scalable, automatic performance boost across the whole network. And you don't get put on the SMB network because you're an SMB company. You get this full access and power of the full CDN. The uh, global presence too. A lot of businesses, of course, are going global if they're not already going global. So if you need to think about delivering to end users in different locations, Europe, South America, Asia, Australia, an Edgecast account covers that for you. If you want to build out a data center in Asia, stop. Just please call me before you do that. And we can, uh, we can help as well. So we were talking about the other optimizations that Steve Souter and the Yahoo Developers Network does. So um, I'll get to your question in just two minutes. Um, and so what else can we do to help imp perform improvements? Using a CDN will accelerate, again, 70, 80, 90% of most web pages just by choosing any CDN is going to help. But the other optimizations will, will also help. So you can have your web team follow best practices if you have a web team, if you're not outsourcing that or, or managing it through managed services. Or you can look at ways just to accelerate everything and to implement the best practices right there on, on the network. So you may have heard front-end optimization as a uh, term out there. You know, it's, it's a couple companies have popped up, uh, Strangeloop, Blaze.io, what they're doing is they've taken some web optimization recommendations from Google called PageSpeed technology, and they've put that in place as a proxy off of origin. So this is image spriting, CSS spriting. Um, it's uh, all sorts of you know, removing white uh, space. You go down the list, and, and depending on which service you're using, we'll implement different types of page speed filters or front-end optimization. And what you get is that waterfall graph with all these objects on it before, all of a sudden that, that graph gets a lot shorter, depending on how well optimized your, your page can be. You can go to Google's website and their developer site, you do a search for page speed on Google. You can actually plug your website domain into a tool that will review your, your site dip, uh, HTML and determine how well optimized your content is for all these other recommendations. What we do at Edgecast is that we actually can deliver these changes and optimizations 
through our network on our edge server. So instead of it being a proxy off of your origin, we can have the, uh, the optimizations happening through the CDN edge servers. So there's a lot more scale and better performance around it, and you don't have a bottleneck off of your origin. We call that the edge optimizer. Takes the page speed filters and implements it on, on the edge. We also have a specialized network that Edge Optimizer runs on called our Application Delivery Network, ADN. What it's doing is also compressing packets and accelerating it on our middle mile. So if you're sitting here in San Diego and you want to request a file, and that file or page has to come from an origin server sitting in Ashburn, Virginia, what we're doing is proxying the request here in Southern California. We accelerate the request via TCP and HTTP optimizations. It goes back out to Ashburn, Virginia, pulls the response from the origin server there, compresses it, accelerates those packets back out here to Southern California. So we're doing acceleration on this network for the entire um, middle mile. Whereas traditional CDN caching is doing no middle mile acceleration, you don't need it since the files reside on the edge. So, Major, major performance increases. Again, this is the real fine-tuning piece of your web page. What we've done is just make it really easy to implement it without getting your web team or whatever systems are you, you're using on your web page. You go back to that Best Buy page where there's multiple systems. Maybe it's a social community or social media tools, or maybe there's you know, video optimizations or ads being delivered. Well, if you can get seven different web teams to optimize all their code constantly, then you can do that, or you can drive this through Edge Optimizer to make these changes on the fly. So it's kind of like forcing your website to be performance compliant by having it run through this system. That's it. I promise to be, be short. 